Ice-T is right here in the studio, actor, rapper, star of Law & Order SBU, author of a new book, Ice, a memoir of gangster life and redemption from South Central to Hollywood. And here he is in uh, Lower Manhattan. Ice-T, good morning. Hey, thanks for having me. It's early. It's early. That's right. Yeah. It's early. Well, that we're even more grateful for that. You know, we're thrilled to have you on the program. We started a conversation earlier talking about uh, pop lyrics mm -hmm. these days uh, being very narcissistic and, uh, you know, uh, encouraging a culture of it's all about me. You've personally experienced the difficulty of trying to figure out what impact your lyrics have on the culture. What's that like? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, narcissism, I think, I think with hip hop, that's part of it. It's kind of like, you know, a rapper doesn't say I'm kind of okay. He says I'm the best. My <laughs> DJ's the best. And rappers are kind of like built in promoters. We're always yelling our record label. We're saying get our record. So we, we, we kind of mastered shameless promotion. But I think that all st stems from where it came from. It comes from kids that didn't really have anything. So a lot of the narcissism was connected to a false reality, like I have a mansion and a yacht and you live in the projects. You know what I'm saying? So you're trying to empower yourself through the lyrics. Myself, yeah, I've come under the gun a lot of times because sometimes as I rap, I don't rap as myself. I rap as other characters. I put myself in the place of people. And a lot of people... They don't understand that. They think everything I say is iced tea. No, I play characters, you know. So and, of course, you play characters on TV as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. Uh, when people, though, take your lyrics and use them to become their own characters mm -hmm. and self-marketers, right. does that have broad implications in the culture beyond simply empowering individuals who need some empowerment? I, I don't really know. I mean, you know, it's it's always a problem if you take any art and 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 try to uh, apply it to yourself. It's kind of like if you watch a movie and then try to apply that to yourself. If we watch Goodfellas and then I decide I'm going to be De Niro, oh, yeah, you know, you're going to yeah, get that, yourself in trouble like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so I think yeah. similar with music, when you apply these things and say, hey, you know, I'm this girl in this song or I'm this guy in this song, and you really try to live it out. It could be it could be potentially hazardous. You know, it seems to me that is uh, even more complicated when you're a dad mm -hmm. uh, living a role that is so visible. And part of this uh, new book, Ice, a memoir of gangster life and redemption from South Central to Hollywood, is really the story of how you grew up one way. Mm -hmm. Your kids grew up another way. Right. And the mixing of the messages of what you do when you're growing up and trying to make your way in the world is a pretty big challenge. Yeah, well, you know, especially me, I came from the other side of the tracks and I tried a lot, a lot of illegal stuff to get paid. And what I did find out is that as I changed my life, my daughter, she changed her views on the guy she liked. You know, so like when I was out in the streets and I was more or less a hustler, those were the guys she was attracted huh. to. And then as I started to change and make better decisions and move into the music career and now an actor, now she wants an actor, you know? so you There are some actor hustlers, though, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's I am one, yeah. you know? <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think, you know, as a parent, you are a role model, especially to your children, you know? But the one thing about my kids is they, they were always around the music. I kept them informed. They understood the difference. I didn't keep them away from it. It was impossible. My little boy learned how to walk on a tour bus. You know, he was out on the road with me and he we would push him, like let him go down the middle of the tour bus and he would touch side to side. And that's how he learned how to walk. You know, that's great. It is a walking device. Those tour buses, <laughs> yeah. you know. um, is that a good thing or is that just kind of like come on along for the ride? Uh, we'll, we'll sort it out later. I think it's a good thing. I think it's better to have them with you than to leave them away, mm. leave them at home. And, uh, you know, I just think that parenting is difficult enough and everyone has to parent from their reality you know uh, I can't parent for uh, upper class reality if I'm not I can only parent from my reality if I'm unemployed I have to try to parent from that reality although you're in Hollywood now oh you're no I'm not, from, I'm not yeah. I'm, once again I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about myself yeah, I'm talking about yeah, yeah. if I'm someone else and I'm unemployed then I have to parent from that now I'm doing good so my kids you know they admire me they watch me but I think in my book what I'm trying to say is that I was orphaned early. I didn't. Every time I tried to make a move, 
I had a problem. It wasn't that easy. And how did somebody who started off so wrong end up on NBC playing the police? Mm. It's like, how did I make those transitions? And people always say, well, I can't do it. This is going to be difficult. I'm like, what well, was difficult for me? So maybe my journey could inspire you. Now, we're talking with Ice-T about his new memoir, Ice, a memoir of gangster life and redemption. Are you ever faced with a situation where your kids, knowing about your life, might be tempted to do some things that you might justify for yourself growing up tough neighborhood right. in South Central, but they don't have those pressures? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a part of my book where I talk about my son, <coughs> excuse me, getting involved in a crime, him and his friends decided to go into a car that was parked next to him. And one kid took a laptop computer, and my son stole a tennis racket, right? So I'm like, you didn't even want to steal anything. You just wanted to be down with your friends and not look like a punk. But at the end of the day, I'm scolding him, and he said, well, how did you do it, Dad? And? Well, I said, well, let's start it off. And I always start off real. I say, first off, I'll teach you the criminal way. You don't steal out of your own car. Secondly, there wasn't a, there wasn't a, 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 a TV set or a camera on every palm tree in the city. And third, I didn't have a rich dad that, and I had, so I didn't have a rich dad and I didn't, so I I wasn't in a position I didn't have to do it. But there were some moms in South Central who would say it's, it's, it's not okay to steal whether you're poor or rich. You know what? I tell him I, he wants to know from my perspective. So I said, this is what how I would do it. But also at the same time, I wasn't in the situation you're in. So therefore, if you go to jail, you're going to be you're 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 privileged, kid. They're not going to have any mercy for you. Yeah. I was stupid. I came from another position. You don't have that same reason to do the same things I did. So I told my son, I said, look, before you ever decide to cross the law, whether you're doing it to be cool or not, give your dad a call. Call me up. You know, I'm in a position where I can help you because a lot of things people do. Kids do. They do it to be cool. They don't really do it because they need the money. They don't do it because they're broke, especially in my son's case. He doesn't need the money. He's doing it to be part of a crew or be cool. I'm like, there's other ways to be cool, dude. Don't try that. I mean, don't don't try to live my life. And as as dorky as dads are, you got a pretty good crew. Yeah. He, he should stick with that, maybe. How old is he? 19. All right, well, almost almost out of the woods. Well, you know, the thing of it is, one thing I have advantage on him, he knows I'm cooler than all of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll listen to me. But I, I, I try to, I have to come at him. I, I have a way of angling it, and I tell him first the truth, and then I, 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 and then I put my moral on it, like, dude, listen, you got a lot of opportunities. You have a lot of options I didn't have. Take advantage of those options. I work that's, to open those options. That's the takeaway. Mm-hmm. Ice tea. We got to go. Hey, thanks so much. Hey, well, thanks, and I hope everybody takes a chance to look at the book. Uh, The book is Ice, a memoir of gangster life and redemption from South Central to Hollywood. We're talking about pop lyrics, narcissism, and everything else on The Takeaway. Ice-T, thanks so much. I'm John Hockenberry. This is The Takeaway.